This is the Trend England Show. We're on location at the Oklahoma State Capitol. It's cold out here. There are a lot of people here, a lot of signs. There's a lot of traffic. We actually open up our parking lot at the Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs and let people park there for free as a uh, sign of goodwill to let people come on down here. We're going to talk to some of them for the show today. So uh, I- I'm just going to spend the whole show today wandering around and uh, asking folks some questions why they're here um, why they're here, especially uh, for, for teachers who are striking from school when the legislature passed what is uh, more than a $6,000 pay raise just last week. So we're going to go find out. I'm Luke Mills. Are you a student? Yeah, I'm a senior at Westmore High School. Okay, so w- what, what brings you here today? Uh, I just really, I've, I feel very passionate about education for our state. I'm, I'm a great product, I think. Well, we're, we're all great products of a great system. And it could be better if we had proper funding for education. So, I mean, a lot of people are asking, the legislature passed a big tax increase, a big pay raise for teachers last week. I mean, is that, I mean, does that, you think, meet a lot of the needs, at least? A, I mean, is it a good step? What, what do you think about that versus what you're hearing today? It's a good first step. We've seen a lot of signs that say, like, um, it's a good Band-Aid for an open wound, but it's, it's only a step. What they're really worried about is edu- funding for education, for my textbooks, for my desks. We have desks we can't. We have desks that like flip over if you put any weight on the front of them because there's no funding to replace them. I mean, have you heard any talk? Because one of the things that you hear from legislators, you hear from from other folks, is I mean, local school districts decide whether they're going to spend money on buildings or textbooks or teacher salary. Um, I mean, is anybody here talking about just how local school districts make their decisions? Uh, no, it's it's mostly been about, I think, funding. Just because, yeah, I, there hasn't been much talk about how decisions are made in school districts. It's all been about funding from the legislature, I think. Okay. Um, one uh, w- one last question here. I mean, h- how much how much do you think teachers on average should be paid? Uh I think the six thousand dollar parries is great. New Mexico's got fifty thousand. I think that should be a goal for us in the future. I think right now this first six thousand dollars is a great this is a great first step. I I think they're it's a good compromise for the ten thousand they're asking for. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, have a good one. Uh, my name is Marty Ferguson and I teach kindergarten at Ninicol, Oklahoma. Okay. I'm Michalina McMahill. I teach second grade at Gracemont Elementary. Okay, we'll start with a simple thing. What what brings you out today? Our kids. Uh, we need funding for our kids. Um, it, it's almost impossible to do it without more funding. So, so the the legislature passed a, a big tax increase last week. Passed a big, I mean, really a, a big pay raise. Going to put us second in our region to Texas as far as average teacher pay. What what do you think about that? I appreciate the gesture of a raise. But I am more concerned about the money, more money not going to our kids in our classroom and also our support staff. I think their raise, the, the amount they gave them, is an insult to them. You can't run a school without your support staff, so they need to be appreciated just as much. And a $50 increase per student per year doesn't even buy a textbook. So. I mean, one of the things that people have been following is the OEA was asking for a $5,000 raise. Then it became a, a 6000 to eventually a $10,000 raise. Um, and, and the, you know, I, I think a lot of legislators, I've talked to some, some folks in the legislature, and they feel like we just did what the OEA asked for, and now they're kind of pivoting and saying something else. Should I mean, should some of that money that went to the teacher raise, maybe what's above $5,000, should that have gone to textbooks? Or, or I mean, what, how would you reallocate what the legislature did to try to meet those needs for textbooks and things like that? That's funny that you just asked that, because about 10 steps before we caught you, um, we were just discussing that, that I would be willing to give up my raise just so we can have more teachers. We have 38 second graders in one classroom with one teacher at my school. We have 34 fifth grade t- uh, students and one teacher. I'd be willing to give up my raise just to fund more teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're from a little bitty school and um, it hurts. It hurts big time. So, well, Thank you both so much for uh, what you do. All right, thank you. thank you. Melissa Phillips, teacher in Uluga. It's my 28th year. Wow. So uh, what brings you to the Capitol today? Uh, more funding uh, for the kids. It's all about the kids. I um, I just, we need more for books. We need more for materials. I spend hundreds out of my own pocket. Um, And I'm here both as a teacher and as a parent. 
So one of the things I've been asking people, because we the show is focused on public policy. I talk to legislators a lot, and they say, man, we just passed this big raise, and we still have teachers out on strike. And the raise is actually more than the OEA was asking for just about a month ago. So, I mean, would your advice to them be that, that some of what was given to teachers in a raise actually should have been put into textbooks and other things above the 5,000? Or, I mean, what's, what would you say to legislators who just voted for the biggest tax increase in state history? Well, I would say, why is it that you are the 15th highest paid legislators in the country, and yet your teachers are the 50th? And I'd also say that it's about so much more than teacher salaries. It's about funding schools. There's no money for materials. There's no money for uh, book textbooks. I'm a librarian. There's no money for library books. Uh, I do all my own fundraising to buy books for our library. The average copyright date's 1989. Um, you know, it, there's just there's got to be more money. I mean, uh, the raise is great, but it's much more important that we get money in the schools. So, I mean, I guess back to that question is, I mean, should the legislature have gone to 5000 and then taken the other money and put that into textbooks? I mean, they put some into textbooks, I guess $33 million, um, but, but should they have allocated the money differently and not given such a big raise and put more of it into curriculum, textbooks, things like that? Uh, you know, to me, they should fund both. I mean, you've got to, you've got to pay the teachers or they're going to leave or you're going to have uncertified people in there teaching your children but you've also got to fund the materials. Other school, other states can do it. There's no reason why Oklahoma can't. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm Madeline Wagner and I go to Westmore High School and I'm in 10th grade. I'm Rhonda Allen. I teach first grade at South Lake Elementary and more. Okay, so what, what brings you here today? We are here to encourage our legislators and fight for our kids for funding for education. So the legislature just passed a big tax increase last week. They passed a, a raise that's going to get teachers to second in the region right after Texas. I mean, I think there's a, there's a sense that a lot of people are frustrated that teachers are on strike after all that happened last week. How do you explain that? They forgot to fund our kids. They didn't give anything for education, so we still have nothing for our kids. Well, the, 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 biggest, the biggest expense in education, though, is, is teacher salaries, isn't it? I'm not sure, but we have to be able to do something with our kids. Um, I had 30 first graders last year in my class. This year I have 25, but next year I could be right back up to 30. And a lot of times we just don't have the teachers to even hire. So the problem that they have created by not funding education for a decade is our college students are not even enrolling in education. So even if they choose to fund education right now, raising our salaries, it's not going to show evident until four, five years, because it takes that long to graduate a student to get them into the education field. So we are looking at extremely long term to fill this heartbreaking situation we're in right now. So I, I talked to one teacher a few minutes ago, and she said something surprising. She said she would rather not get a raise and spend that money hiring more teachers, buying more textbooks. Is, I mean, is, is that what I'm hearing from you or, or not quite? Well, more public schools, we have done an awesome job on watching our budget. But we cannot hire teachers that do not exist. And that's where we feel the pinch. Not because I had 30 in the classroom last year, there was not a teacher to hire. And then that even is harder for, like Madeline at Westmore with teaching uh, in her chemistry class. And those teachers are harder to find. You know, let's let's step a couple <laughs> feet this way so we don't get ran over by the minivan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so 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 Madeline, what what do you what do you think about all this? Um, I think it's just frustrating, and why I'm out here is because I have 35 kids in my geometry class, and most of my classes don't even have enough money to afford textbooks, so our books are online. Well. Uh, my chemistry class, our book's online. We didn't get a chemistry uh, book online until after the first nine weeks. So the first nine weeks, we had no resource material to actually reference on. And then some students don't have um, computers or anything, so they can't um, access the online book. And um, my history class, our books, like, are falling apart. Like, some of our books are missing pages, don't have back covers, and they're 10 years old. So if they, our legislature expects me to learn the best with 35 kids in the classroom, no one-on-one -on -one time, and books that are falling apart, I mean, that's just crazy to me. Thank you both so much.
Well, I'm Robert Davis. I teach at Carl Albert Middle School. I teach science and citizenship. Okay, great. So your sign says right the wrong of underfunding. So I tell us why you're why you're here though. Well, I've, I've actually been following the cause for over 10 years. My wife was a certified teacher for a period of time and she um, quit teaching to go into nursing and when she did she received twenty thousand dollars more in income and so you know I, I got invested in that I was still working at Rose State College at that point in time but I've become an emergency certified teacher this year to help fill the gap um, we have nearly two thousand emergency certified teachers in the in the state now um, and I'm really concerned about the lack of funding and how we've lost funding for education based on tax giveaways and tax reductions. So uh, oftentimes Oklahoma gets compared to Texas. In, in Texas, a lot of the funding for education comes from local school districts. Um, they decide, you know, their, their starting salary for teachers is actually lower than Oklahoma's starting salary for teachers. I mean, do you think we should move to more of, of that model? It seems like there's all the conversation in Oklahoma is just about the state, state funding, and the districts and their decisions get, get missed. It, are, are we missing something? Do we need to change? Well, as a teacher, I think it doesn't really matter where the funding comes from as long as it's there. While they may have a lower starting minimum salary, the reality is they're not paid in a lower category. You know, they have a basic salary that's less than ours. Um, <clears throat> I like to give a couple analogies. One is that, a, you know, a college student coming out as a teacher, if they were working a part-time job at uh, 7-Eleven, their hourly rate was as much as what theirs will be with their degree. In the last decade, there's been a um, comparison of degrees that um, that are bachelor degrees that require this about the same level of education. And so those um, teachers, um, most uh, degrees, employment or de career fields have gone up by 13% while teaching has gone up less than 2% over that same period of time. So it doesn't matter to me where the funding comes from, although I, you know, when you talk about Texas or if you talk about North Dakota, both of those states have a higher gross production tax um, to feed their state revenues. Um, we dropped ours to 1% then locked it in at 2% and recently we're looking at raising it to 5%. 5% uh, is still half of what North Dakota's is and they're both an agriculture and, and energy state for their funding. So I think that's a good comparison. Um, they've kept theirs at 10% the entire time and had plenty of um, horizontal drilling and um, you know as a as an energy source and those companies uh, didn't leave those states or l lose the jobs that were there so uh, the legislature just passed a big a big increase like you mentioned going going from two percent to five percent on that the first three years of, of drilling and uh, they passed a big teacher pay raise it's going to take us to just just under where Texas is uh, we'd be the second highest in the region for teacher pay does that I mean do you feel like that answers most of the the problem at least on the, the side of teacher pay well on the side of teacher pay it's a big improvement and would put us in a competitive place where I think more people might select teaching as a career field um, but at the same time if the funding if they start if they've taken away a certain per part of that funding already I understand with the hotel tax um, if they if they mandate a teacher pay raise but don't have the funding for that they'll ask us to reduce funding in other areas or reduce some, I mean, there'll still be ta tax cuts over that same period of time that will ultimately affect schools by increasing classroom sizes and by, um, you know, not allowing us to put back in things like art education, music education in certain grades. Um, so I, so while it meets, it's a partial solution, and I think that's why there's 30,000 people out here today, teachers, students, and parents all advocating because that doesn't replace the um, nearly a billion dollars in tax giveaways that our state has, has done. Okay. Thank you very much. So there you go, my conversation with a few teachers and a couple of students out here at the state capitol this uh, Monday of the uh, fake strike. Don't forget it's fake strike because schools are actually closed uh, for the most part. Some, some people may be taking personal days to be here, but most people are here because uh, the school districts themselves, management actually made the choice to close schools. Uh, despite the fact that the legislature passed a big increase, and you heard in the first interview, I thought that was really interesting and very thoughtful. You heard a teacher say, look, I would give up the raise uh, to put the money into support staff, into uh, buying books, library books, uh, textbooks, things like that. 
uh, a lot of different ideas out here about what uh, what Oklahoma needs to do on education. Uh, my closing thought is this, and I'm going to have a blog post go up at ocpathink.org uh, about this tomorrow morning. The legislature made one big mistake last week that has, has kept the focus on the legislature rather than shifting it to local school districts where it belongs, and that is they have uh, forced the money, most of the funding that the legislature passed, they have forced to go into teacher pay raises. I think that's frankly a mistake i think what the legislature should have done i think that's the mistake um really of what the legislature did because what they what they should have done what they could have done pass all of the revenue pass it off to school districts and explain to the public um what what kind of a raise it could be maybe set a recommend i mean they could they could set a state recommended salary schedule for teachers but still leave it up to local districts to make those decisions that would shift the conversation to local districts, local administrators, local school boards. That would shift the conversation, frankly, exactly where it is in Texas. We get compared to Texas all the time. And in Texas, it's local school boards that make the decision how much they're going to pay teachers. They're more empowered to make decisions with their own funds. Their starting salary is now much, much lower than it is in Oklahoma. But their average teacher pay is slightly, slightly ahead of where Oklahoma will be after the uh, law passed last week goes into effect. So uh, there you go. I think that's that is the one mistake. You see that in some of the conversations here. The focus is still on the state legislature. That's not where it is in Texas. If we want to compare ourselves to that state, if we want to compare teacher salaries to the, what they are in that state, uh, that really is the answer. I'm Trent England. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can subscribe on YouTube. You can subscribe on iTunes. Um, we're on Facebook. Love to hear from you on Facebook there. And uh, you can find our whole archive, including the radio show archive, at ocpathink.org. Thanks for watching.